Since the Bleach manga ended, many fans have been left frustrated, confused and disappointed by the ending we were given. And honestly, all for good reason. Bleach ended its series rather abruptly and given the context that we have now regarding the office's health unfortunately deteriorating at the time, we lost about half of the content the Thousand Year Blood War arc was not only promised to us, but also deserve to get. I think many of the issues regarding the fast pacing would be overlooked and forgiven had we understood the main core elements and payoff towards the end. Sure, we were shoehorned a little bit of information about Jewelbox's true intentions and why he did the things the way that he did, but this wasn't by any means satisfactory. Today, I'll be discussing my overall opinions and theories in regards to how Jewelbox may have been defeated. And while this may be expanded more upon in the future of the anime, well, at least I hope. I feel it's a fun discussion to have. But before we get into that, this video has been sponsored by the one, the only, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is the first game to bring a true console level experience to your phone that is now also on PC. Raid Shadow Legends has a whopping 600 unique champions with no two champions being the same for you to collect, upgrade and explore millions of champion combinations so you can take them with you on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles and even PvP arena maps. Matches. I've been having so much fun on this game and I've been currently using the legendary character skill of Drake's because guys look at this character design She's one of the most popular characters in the game not only because she's free But because she's one of the most in my view anyway powerfulest characters having great stun abilities and her usefulness to drain the targets turn meter with a passive healing of 10% each turn, she's a great overall character to almost use anywhere in the game. With that being said though, I'm also a big fan of Cephalia that I use specifically for PvP battles. She's able to manipulate turn meters as well as her insane team heal which really comes clutch when you're on the brink of defeat, as well as stripping enemy buffs as well, so it's great for the arena mode in general if that's the game mode of your choice. So watch new in Raid, Raid just celebrates its third year anniversary and it was huge. Free gifts for everyone, a bunch of new content and events and of course new champions. Raid's currently running a special Delina chase event where you can get your hands on the amazing Delina, a brand new legendary champion from the High Elves faction just by logging in. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and July 20th and you'll get Delina for free. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Delina is one of the strongest support champions in the entire game and can help carry your team get past many of Raid's tougher challenges, so you really don't want to miss your chance to get her. This is the best time to get started in Raid, and if you click on the link in the description down below or scan the QR code on the screen, you'll get a free starter pack worth almost $40. We are talking three champions at once, Misericord, Tiger Soul, Ramiro, plus 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 Fire XP Brews, and 10 Spirit Brews. They gave only only one champion in the past, so don't miss your chance to get such big rewards this time round. But wait, there's more! The gifts do keep on coming for new players once you're in the game. Just enter the promo code MYDELINA to get your hands on everything. Simple as that. Get 50 XP brews to instantly get your legendary hero Delina to max level 50, as well as a ton of silver on top. So what are you waiting for? Go check out Raid Shadow Legends in the description down below or the QR code again, that is Raid Shadow Legends. Thank you for that and let's get back into the video. So, what killed Juabark? There are three possibilities of key moments that could have possibly diverged into this outcome. Number one, Aizen's total hypnosis ability. Number two, Uryu's silver arrow, number three, Ichigo himself, or four, maybe just all three in general. Jiwabak, believe it or not, does show weakness in regards to his ability. Without going too much into repeating the story, he gains the ability to see all. But not just all, but every outcome from every possible future. This allows him to twist or alter things into working the way he wishes and even lets him counterattack his opponents with pre-planting traps, just like in the fight against Ichigo. Now, if you're a fan of Bleach, saying this is only a small fraction of his insane amount of ability and skills that he possesses. But, considering that this is his core ability called A the Almighty, it's also his biggest weakness. For example, he could see everything, even alter Ichigo to attack the Spirit King or Soul King, but for some reason, couldn't see the effects of Mimihagi, the right hand of that very Soul King. While I could explain how this alone is enough to defeat him, I want to use more than just one possibility of outcome within this video. So let's start off with the charismatic, lovable Aizen Sosuke and his Kyoka Sugetsu ability of complete hypnosis. As we know, Dual Box ability doesn't allow him to change or alter things that have already happened, just future events. 
and as we know, Joabuck finally awakened his almighty ability during his fight with Ichibei, much later on in the story than his first initial reaction with Aizen. During Yuha's attempt to recruit Aizen into his special forces, Aizen had already caught him under his ability, and he displays this by altering Yuha's perception of time, as he notices in his first confrontation with Ichigo. Because of this, and what we know about Aizen, is that once under complete hypnosis, it's impossible to remove yourself from, unless you touch Aizen's blade much like Gein did in the Karakura War Arc, or negating it by having an overwhelming amount of spiritual energy by at least double. Considering that this effect is still in play during the final fight as Aizen disguises himself as Ichigo, it's safe to say Yuha doesn't negate Aizen in this aspect. However, as surface level as that sounds, there is another side of the coin which may entail that what I have just said is completely untrue. Now I would like to self-debate myself that it's actually possible Yuha's spiritual energy was stronger than Aizen's, obviously, but we know you need quite a significant amount to negate your opponent's abilities. So I found it really interesting that Aizen used Hado 99, Gyoryu Tenmetsu, the five swirling dragons of destruction. Because if you didn't know, this specific Kido absorbs or draws upon the energy surrounding it, so you can take it in two ways. Either it transferred Aizen some of Yuha's forever expanding black reishi for a brief moment of time, or it just absorbed enough into the Kido itself for a window of time for Aizen to fool Yuha while Ichigo sneaks him for a killing blow. I say this because from my perception of reading, Yuha Box black reishi was replaced with purple energy, and after when Yuha pierced Ichigo, the black reishi returned. And when we were shown that it was actually Aizen, noting that Aizen himself was interested that this move worked as he was fascinated on how Yuha perceived him. It's also possible that when Yuha stabbed Aizen, he stopped the total hypnosis. Whether he consumed him or not, like a ceiling, we don't really truly know. Considering Aizen is fused with his Zonpakuto, I imagine touching his body would reward the same effect. Just food for thought on that one really though. But let's move on to Uryu's Silver Arrow. The Still Silver, or in translation, Silver of Stillness, is essentially like a blood clot made of silver. This is caused when Yuha was essentially sacrificing his race with a light to take away their powers, so they can return to him. People either die, or if you're a pure breed, you may in fact live. But that's not what's important. This piece of silver is what's important. Uryu's dad did an autopsy on his mother's corpse to retrieve this clot of silver and forged it into an arrowhead in short. If this silver comes into contact with Yuhaz's blood, all of his abilities are essentially temporarily suspended. The interesting thing to me was, how did Yuhar not see this in his visions of the future? Why did he not anticipate the use of such a well-known Quincy-made object? Surely, in one of his futures, he foresaw this getting used. While I haven't much to say on this, I generally don't believe that it can be seen with energy or an ability. If it is in fact an artifact or a piece of material which stops the movement of spiritual energy, then wouldn't it make sense that it would be undetectable by the use of spiritual energy itself? Like, for example, a barrier that energy cannot cross through. And if energy can't touch it, then in theory, it cannot be seen by anything other than physical organs like the eyes. Maybe a poor example, but hopefully you know what I mean. And last but not least, there's Ichigo. Well, maybe not Ichigo, but more so Zongetsu. No, not white Zongetsu, but the Quincy Zongetsu. Now, for those that are this far into the video, you would know that Zongetsu stemmed from Huabak. They are essentially one in the same, like taking a small percentage of your soul and placing it into somebody else's body. Much like the same as when White poured his energy into Masaki. Then again, that doesn't sound too family friendly. <laughs> So I'll, I'll say contaminated instead. Now is the white that we see in Ichigo the same white that we see in the fight with Ishii and Masaki? No, of course not. And this follows the same with Old Man Quincy Zongetsu. Now while Zongetsu may have been more of a mirror of Yuar Bark, much like at the start of the series, where he fails to speak his name due to Ichibase's influence, over time he's become more of a sentient spirit, thinking for themselves and making their own choices. Would this be because names in Bleach have influence over meaning? Possibly, but I'll deem that irrelevant for the sake of not going too deep into it. So, what's the point that I'm actually trying to make? Well, regardless of if Zongetsu and Yuha are two separate sentient beings, the fact remains that they're still connected, much like Ishii and Masaki and Ichigo and Rukia, before Byaki destroyed his soul chain. And I say his very lightly as Byaki only severed the source of Ichigo's spiritual energy, being the one he took from Rukia. So don't misinterpret that statement. Point is, 
Yuha and Zangetsu are still connected. They are built from one of the same. And while I take Yuha's quote of Ichigo changing the future before he is resurrected with a pinch of salt, it would logically make sense that Zangetsu holds somewhat of the almighty ability, even if 1%. Right? It's very apparent to me that the downfall of Yuha is in fact Zangetsu. If seeing every future and outcome is the core ability, bundled up with absorbing the right hand of the Soul King, naturally, Zangetsu would also, if by a fraction, through connection or metaphorical Soul Link, have these abilities too. So sure, Yuha can perceive every single outcome of every single timeline. All, but potentially one. The one that Zangetsu is limiting Yuha himself from seeing. Considering Zangetsu would have the Soul King Rieishi in him as well, and Yuha didn't anticipate Mimihagi from appearing, there's lots of holes for Yuha to fail here. And maybe that one outcome that Yuha couldn't see needed all elements above to make the outcome be the most desirable. There's also this moment with Yuha speaking internally about Hush World showing Yuha a dream, which was in reality a future. Perhaps Perhaps solidifies my theory on Yuha being gatekeeped by that very future itself. Because while Zangetsu and Yuha are connected, Zangetsu and Hushworld are not. So that could have also been a possible fail on Zangetsu had it not been done right. But that's my theory anyway. Hopefully I didn't make it too complicated and hopefully you enjoyed the theory. I personally like this idea and I hope it's correct, but I'd be really interested to hear what your takes are in the comment section down below. Of course I want to thank the sponsor again for this video and of course if you haven't hit the like and subscribe and if you don't mind sharing it around I would appreciate that as well. With that being said though, I'm going to catch you guys later. You guys of course have this fine day. Been handsome as always people. Peace out.